Karen, I can't say I'm excited this time. I think I'm a little nervous this time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. So he builds himself, this guest, as our first shadowy figure. And in trying to do research on this person, there's not a lot out there. All I know is that he is a healer and he's a mage. A mage. When have you heard that term last? It's been a long time. He's coming on the show to talk to us about all kinds of personal experiences he has with the seen and the unseen. Mm -hmm. And I honestly have no idea what to expect. So strap your seatbelts on <laughs> because here we go. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Benton Ryer. Benton, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Of course. Glad to be here. So, Benton, we should let everyone know that when you reached out to us, you offered, before we did the interview, you wanted to do a clearing for Karen and I, which you did yesterday. And I think that's probably the, the best place to start. You bill yourself as a healer. So how do you heal people and of what and why? I just do it, I guess, because I can. And as far as how, that's a long story in itself. But I call on higher powers to work through me and heal who I would like to heal or who should be healed. When, when did you know that you had this ability? I've always had abilities, but I really started healing people through the pandemic. Just because all the oh. ma material outside based on sorcery, it's all very internal type gnosis type of art form. But I seem to have the bil ability to really affect the physical world with it and ground it in reality as you experience it. Well, not only is he mysterious in his responses, for those of you who are watching the video, you see he he's actually... He's dressed like a ninja, and he did tell us he was coming on dressed as a ninja. Benton, are you comfortable letting us know why you're keeping your, your identity hidden? Yeah, I think it's better this way, at least for now. You know, there's lots of people there. Well, I mean, there's a few people who that I could think of that have different abilities that are pretty concrete, and um, they've tried it their way and come to be, be public about it. And I've seen how that worked out for them. So it's better that I do it this way. I need to do something else. Hmm. Okay. So you are reaching out to higher powers to help you heal folks. And on your Instagram, if you go to your Instagram page, and we'll add a direct link on our show notes so that you can go check them out for yourself. There are a lot of testimonials on there. Now you, you do these healings for free. Right? You're not charging people to do these healings, and there's tons and tons and tons of testimonials on there that you've posted of people, whether they're video testimonials or written testimonials, saying how they have been helped by you. I mean, that's super commendable, but most people that, that perform Reiki energy healings or any kind of healings like that do it as part of, of how do they make a living. Right. So what prompted you to do this and offer it to people for free? It's not Reiki. So I mean, like, probably because I'm prone to do it for people for free is one of the reasons why I can do it. It's not something that is designed for me to be able to enrich myself with. So I don't. I have other talents and I mm. use that stuff. As a matter of fact, if I were to try to charge people for healing, and having seminars and charging at the door, like some of these people channeling presences, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And I, okay, I, make, I, make no, I make no claim to their legitimacy or lack thereof. I think that, especially in the um, spiritual and metaphysical communities, people need to be held to scrutiny a little bit more. I'm speaking at a expo next month you know, in the same type of garb I'm in now. So don't expect, I don't want people to expect to see me. 
but you know, there's a lot of people doing this and just by how they describe it, I know that they're just making it up just to get by me. Huh. So did you, once you, you know, realize you had these abilities, did you have any sort of training or a mentor or did you just kind of work it out on your own? A little bit of both. I had a mentor, but a lot of it, uh, you have to kind of work out on your own. Um, you have to do lots of reading. You can't not read books. You know, the, especially mm-hmm. ancient text. The ancients really knew what they were talking about when they were talking about spirits. Mm-hmm. And I see people in the modern day, especially, they kind of speculate that the ancients didn't know what they were talking about. But they, did, they don't know what they knew and didn't know. And they knew more than them. And I'm certain of that. Yeah, and, and I believe that. I think we have so much stuff in the world now that kind of is distracting. So in the ancient times when there was less, you know, technology and kind of visual uh-huh. toys, it was probably they were able to focus better. Uh-huh, yep. The people that devoted themselves at the temples, they had nothing else to do, too, except for, well, mm-hmm. they didn't have anything else to do. Because what would happen, <laughs> yeah. too, is... Lo- the you know, locals wouldn't really bother them. Soldiers wouldn't. Bandits wouldn't either. And if someone, if somebody had some type of injury, some type of ailment, and the physicians couldn't handle it, they go to the temple and mm-hmm. ask someone like me to channel one of the gods to see what they can do to help. So, is is that then what you're doing? You're channeling gods as opposed to channeling energy, or do you consider that the same? Like, how does that work for you? Uh, it's not. It's not the same. It's for, it's for sure not the same. Yeah, I've seen some things on your Instagram where where you actually talk about the fact that it's not the same. That's different than Reiki energy and things like that. And and that what you do is actually so much stronger than these types of things. So I guess it's a it's a perfect segue into what our experience was because we we did undergo a healing from you yesterday. Each of us individually, and you do this through Instagram which is one of, one of the most interesting things about it, but because you would think you, know, you have to be on the phone or you do a video chat or something, but we don't. We actually just texted on Instagram, which was super interesting. And you had us just lay down and relax and you got to work. Karen, can you tell us about your experience? Well, so I screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I was so like focused on doing it right that I did it wrong. <laughs> And so, you know, he's like, lay back and and observe. And I'm thinking, okay, so I need to look at the phone. (laughs) So the whole time I was, I was laying back, but I had my hands kind of up and my my phone in my hands and I was like kind of waiting and watching. And then it was after that, that I kind of told him that I screwed up and he was very kind and gave me a few more minutes in which that time I I did it. I think I did it the right way. So for me, the, the first time I did feel like a weird pressure on my stomach. So, and I haven't, not knowing what I, to expect, I'm assuming that's kind of what I was receiving. The second time it was kind of similar. I didn't, I didn't really feel a lot, but yesterday all day I had had a pretty bad pain in my shoulder and like, I couldn't lift it up more than halfway. I don't know where it came from and I don't have it today. So I assuming that that, that was the healing. Hmm. So even though I didn't really know what to feel, it worked. (laughs) <laughs> that makes sense. Well, that's interesting because when I had mine afterwards, Benton and I talked about the fact that maybe the energy was being saved for me because I felt a lot more. And I also didn't know what to expect. We, you and I didn't really talk about what you guys did. So we all each went into it cold. And I have, everyone knows, I am the skeptic in the group. I'm the one going, yeah, okay, yeah, but how can you be sure, right? So I, I'm going to give my disclaimer. I've got no idea if my mind was just making this stuff up or whether it was actually feeling it. But after the session, I did send to Benton what I felt in the hopes that he would confirm that this was indeed what I supposed to have been feeling. And to his true character self, he was very cryptic, didn't say anything. (laughs) So let me just share with you what happened, right? The very first thing when I laid down and he said, relax, and I immediately felt pressure in an area of my body where I have a problem in. So immediately felt that there. It was a, it was an energy. And then from there, it, it was like, it jumped to my head, specifically my eyes and then my midsection and back to that other area that we, that we have an issue with. And then 
it, it's a, these are the weirdest things, right? So bear with me because it, it's weird to me. I, as I was lying there, I felt like I was being lifted up, not lifted up completely, but like like my torso, my head and my, my chest, with, like I was bending at the waist, but I wasn't bending at the waist, but that's how it felt like. And then I felt like all of a sudden I was sinking into the bed, like the bed was sucking me in. Yeah, no, it was very strange. Wow. Uh -huh. Again, I don't know if this is all in my head or if I was just being relaxed enough and that's what, what was happening or if this is really what I was feeling, but I'm just sharing my experience. From there, my legs started throbbing, like no, pulsing, oh. like to, the, to my heartbeat. And I've never felt this before, right? I've laid down millions of times in my lifetime and I've never <laughs> felt, <laughs> I've never felt the blood pulse through my legs to the beat of my heartbeat the way this was happening. Then I suddenly started having a hard time breathing. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, I don't know what to think of this, but I started, I had a, it wasn't like I was like, uh, 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 like dying for breath, but I, I felt like I had to really work to breathe all of a sudden. And then all of a sudden it was a massive release, like a tidal wave that just, oh, my entire body just made me, made me relax, relaxed my entire being. It was very strange. And then it goes on. My right leg started feeling like it was going to cramp up my right calf. Then my, my left hand went slightly cold, almost like it was numb. How do you remember all this? I wrote it down and I, and I, I sent it all to him. So I'm reading it off the text oh, okay. that I sent to Benton because I needed to get some sort of validation. Yeah. And then he said, all done. And I, I mean, my, my first reaction to him was, was W O W in separate texts because I, I like, what the hell just happened to me? Wow. Right. So Benton, can you clear this up? What the hell happened to him? Am I, am I <laughs> making it up or is this really what I was supposed to have felt? It's correct. You're not, you weren't making it up. Wow. Okay. So why so, do you think yeah, his experience was so different from mine? Because probably because he had some problems and spirits wanted to, you know, save my energy for him. But I mean, and also, also too, probably because <laughs> it was just your shoulder, you know, you didn't need that much. You know, what's weird. I just remembered this. I just remember the second time when you said, you know, try it again for five more minutes. I laid down and like on its own, my shoulder like shifted over. And I'm like, huh, that was weird. I just remembered that. And that was the one that was feeling bad. That's feeling better. Wow. See, <laughs> don't question it. We'll just accept it. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> questioning it. I'm, I'm accepting it. I just, uh, it's my disclaimer. I don't know whether I'm making this shit up or whether it's real. <laughs> But this is what my experience was, whether it was real or not. That's what my, what my experience was. So to me, it was a fantastic experience. Like I didn't know what to expect. I felt a lot. And afterwards I didn't know what to, to think. And I still don't, to be honest with you, but I'm curious. You have a lot of experience with this kind of thing, but you also have a lot of experience with, I mean, you, you build yourself as a shadowy figure, right? So let's, let's tackle that topic. What makes you a shadowy figure in your mind? I don't know. I just don't want to be that public. <laughs> I, I do other things. I don't want to be known. Mm -hmm. That killer guy on TV that you know, kills people. And I see how much okay. scrutiny those guys get. Okay. Yeah, yes. Some of those people get I don't, I don't need it. Right. Yeah. It's going to impede me. I need to keep my zen. And if I keep my zen, I get to master what I'm doing. Now, there's a big... There's a big thing, right. another thing that happens with, you know, very spiritual people that have sort of abilities, they figure they don't, they have no idea how they can sort of improve it. They kind of think, well, this is my ability and this is one I always have, but they don't really, you know, try to take it up some notches, which they can, or try to open up other abilities. They just think it just happens. But you know, through study and training, mm. you can sort of better yourself and, and uh, grow into a lot more, which is what I'm trying to do. Mm. And uh, I need my peace for that. Oh, absolutely. Now, you have some experience with what we consider the unseen world. Your book, in fact, we're going to talk about that in a second, but your book is called The Shores of Eternity. You bill it as part mystery and adventure, part journal. It's a memoir of sorcery and it's volume one. And apparently it's a, it's a start of a deeply personal journey into an unseen world. And the cover of the book is very intriguing. So based on the fact that it's called 
a memoir of sorcery. What can you tell us about what don't we know that's out there that people should know? Or maybe they don't well, want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, there's lots of stuff. So one thing that people often seem to do a lot is they take what they experience and they pull it into their existing belief system, which, you know, that doesn't really much, that's never made much sense to me because the size of the universe is full, which is endless, by the way, is full of that many possibilities. So there's, ne so there's never just one thing. There's lots of things. There's different dimensions. There's different realms. There's countless spirits. It goes on and on and on. And when you take this path and you open yourself up to everything, it's nonstop. It's almost restless. Hmm. Well, what kind of things can people expect to read about? What, what kind of experiences have you had? No, dead people. Ancient gods, ancient goddesses, things for this first one, things like this, things like that. Angels. So is this associated at all with Wicca? Wicca? No, it's not Wicca. Wicca is another one of those limited views that people take on where this is how things are. As a matter of fact, more than anything else, I've had more trouble getting on witchcraft podcasts, some of the big ones, because I'll look at what I do and because they can't do it. They dismiss everything that they read on my profile or what anyone else says about it, just because they have that narrow view of what they do, what's possible. You're talking about limiting beliefs like religion and Wicca is a religion, but there's also a, a Druids. There's uh, all kinds of different ancient mages and sorcerers and all kinds of stuff that we don't know about. There's people active. They just can't necessarily do what I do, how I do it. They do it on an internal type of um, metaphysical, astral basis. Although there are some that I found that can do it in the physical, but unfortunately, they don't use it to heal people. Most of them use it to do other stuff, you know, attack and control yeah, because no, it's I easier. It's easier. And we've had people come on that have told us stories of what they've seen after they've died or come close to near death experiences and things like that. And they have talked to us about all kinds of unseen things on your website. I noticed that one of your blogs talks about a medical demon and the personal doctor to the better known demonic hierarchy. When you talk about the unseen. Is that what you're talking about? Demons, angels, that kind of stuff? Yeah, there's everything. Everything that you've ever heard of existed, exists somewhere. Hmm. And you can, and if you practice and train yourself, you can make conscious contact. And here's the thing about demons. If you expect them to be a nightmare, they're going to be a nightmare. If you expect them not to be, then it's just, there's just like any other deity that you can interact with in the unseen world. Now, I know people are going to run wild with speculation about that statement I just made, but just having a conversation is just having a conversation. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to try to ruin your life or destroy you. That's Hollywood. That's how religion sees it. In the perspective from a religious lens, not all demons are evil. As a matter of fact, in ancient Greek literature, some demons were evil and some were good. And it's just as valid as any other religious text. What makes or what constitutes a demon? Like, why would that entity be called a demon? You know, that's, that's, that's a good question. You know, there's not much difference. They it just depends on what the realm they're from. They're different races. They're like, they look different. You know, I guess maybe because they have horns, but some of them are, some demons are very light natured and some of them are more dark natured as a matter of fact uh what you would consider an angel there's more evil angels than there would be evil demons that's not saying one is more than the other it's just the nature of reality a lot of times too what you'll see is when say you know there's a story of demonic possession the priest or whoever else taking care of 
what they're taking care of, things that they're dealing with Satan, but it's almost always something else. In cases of possession, if it's a more mature, even if it's very malicious, if it's a more mature ancient demon, that's maybe, or even angel too, angels possess humans also, maybe 300, 400,000 years old, they'll actually live through that person in the human world and not charge, not cause too much ruckus. And it's the ones that are very young that really can't control themselves. And you see kind of spinning out and things like that, you know, yelling and talking on tones and making a big scene. Can and they I, and be I do exercised? exercise too? Oh yeah, they can. So they can be exercised, but what happens too is especially when drugs are in play, what it does is open the doorways into the mind's eye so wide that it can never be shut. That's why a lot of people who have developed schizophrenia over drug use hear these voices nonstop that torture them. And I can't even help them after that. So the trick is to catch it early. A absolutely. As a lot, the longer that it's going on, the stronger the entity can dig in. So how does an entity get into somebody? Just have to make sure I prevent that. Well, it, it mostly just happens. You know, if you, if you really lower your vibration, it makes it easier, like drunk people, you know, it's easier for them to enter drugs, especially. And some people sometimes are just so sensitive that, you know, they're just in the wrong place. So then that brings up a question because we've heard a lot these days about things like ayahuasca and DMT and that kind of stuff. Those mm -hmm. are, for all intents and purposes, drugs that alter your consciousness. Is that something that could potentially in your estimation, open you up to some sort of possession? Yes, this is not the way. The way to do it is naturally. You want to open yourself up naturally so you can control it. If you do it uncontrolled, you have no control mm -hmm. what interacts with you. I knew I didn't want to take drugs for a reason, Karen. There you go. Now I know why. <laughs> As a matter of fact, people, they pay 80% of people that practice, you know, try to practice magic. They, you know, either get very depressed or I'd say more. Maybe 90, 95, they get very depressed or they go crazy because they don't really practice it right. They don't practice it as a discipline that needs to be practiced every day, which is why you see these Tibetan and Thai monks who very, very devote themselves to their cause. You have to do it though. Because what happens too, when you, and I say this in my interviews a lot, when you make an attempt at a metaphysical life, you send off a signal in the astral realm. And what that does is gets everything there's attention saying that, Hey, this person is an energy source that we can, or I can feed off of. So anyone who practices metaphysics becomes one of these lanterns or is that someone who, who does ayahuasca DMT and goes to those extremes? Both. Both. If somebody has any natural ability, they set off that flare. The people that do ayahuasca and those extremes, they set off those flares too. Most, there's a lot of Christians that used to be ex-witches as a teenager. They start off doing these stupid spells and then they start seeing shadows and things like that. Then they get scared and they get depressed and think, oh my gosh, I just unleashed Satan on myself. When that's not what's happening, well, that's not what's happening at all. They're attracting astral parasites that's feeding off of them. So when they attempt these metaphysical practices, they, you know, they set out the flare and they attract stuff that starts feeding off of them. But when, when they pull back into that religion and try to shut, actively shut everything off, they kind of sever that link and, um, turn off their higher perception, but that doesn't make necessarily make the parasite disappear. But because they can't see it, you know, like an ostrich sticking their head in the sand, they think that because they prayed with their pastor that, you know, Jesus saved them. That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening at all. And this isn't to say that I'm sure that you've had some very convincing psychic people with psychic ability come on the show too. They tend to pull their perception into their belief also. So. Everything within that belief system, those systems is what they experience. For example, there's very, very good mediums that are, make a very good case that they could communicate with the dead. 
and, you know, could pull up some anecdotal evidence that that's what they're doing. But because they're not well read and they don't understand what they're doing, no matter how good they are, they don't realize they're practicing an ancient art, which was once called necromancy. They call it media sh mediumship now, just because it's more tasteful. It's more palatable to, to metaphysicians and spiritual people. Whereas necromancy is sorcery involving the dead, which is what they're doing. They're pulling the dead from where they are and talking to them or opening that channel to talk to them. And they're pulling those energies to themselves. This is which why, which is why a lot of mediums who, you know, those ones that are very convinced, convincing look like Skeletor because they're invoking those energies. And it's also why, you know, a lot of them die of horrible diseases. Or injured. I know that was a lot. Wow. <laughs> uh, you make it sound so appealing. <laughs> uh, but I just, is there just a way for them is. to kind of clear those energies? There is, but when you're doing it every day, I mean, you're, that's what you're doing. You'll have to ups, you'll have to offset mediumship with pulling in the energies from the sun or from nature or from the ocean to kind of clear that off. But, you know, a lot of mediums who do mediumship professionally, they will do it for, they'll have like five or six clients a day or more. And they'll be full pulling in those energies for six or seven, eight hours for the day. And they'll have to offset that with just as much time pulling in, you know, energies of life is what I call it. The sun is a living entity. The earth is a living entity. The ocean is a living entity, which is why I'm able to heal right. and they cannot. So everyone knows Bill myself as a skeptic metaphysician. I, I don't have any skill sets to speak of really. I, I, I don't, I can't astral project. Mm -hmm. I'm not a medium. I'm not a psychic. I don't channel much, but my biggest thing here after this conversation with you is. Hey, I'm dabbling in meditation. I'm dabbling in different things. I'm about to do a warrior breath seminar. How does someone protect themselves from becoming this flare to get a parasite to feed off of them? Can't, is it possible to protect yourself? Yeah, you can protect yourself. It's just a whole, that's a whole lesson in itself. You, you know, just keep yourself healthy, you know, keep your vibration up, you know, you know, Reiki, you know, I know I trash it, but it's better than nothing. You learn source meditation or cosmic meditation. You know, that stuff's good. Higher self meditation. That'll keep you clear. There's a, there's a quite a few ways to do it, but you, you have to do it. You can't just dabble with trying to develop powers from cult currents and expect nothing bad to happen. That's silly. That's like saying that in the whole universe, nothing bad happens to anyone. Just because people preach nothing but love and light, which I mean, you should, you know, that's as humans, that's what we should try to embrace, but that doesn't go with our reality of even human nature. And for people to claim otherwise, <laughs> it's just not, it's just too optimistic. I was having a conversation. I don't like making claims like this, but I was having a conversation with someone and we were talking about is life getting better on earth and, you know, higher vibrations, and people raising their conscience. And, you know, he kind of scoffed and laughed a little. He said something really profound. He said, don't think that if everyone was enlightened, that you wouldn't have different problems. You'd solve some problem, a lot of problems, but you'd have a whole different setup. And he kind of left me to ponder that. You are saying things that are diametrically opposed to most of the conversations we've had with the, some of our past guests, which is mm -hmm. super interesting and, and in a way, kind of super scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You should be scared of what you can't see. Um, it's when you can see it, then that's kind of when the fear draws away when you see it and you know how to deal with it then it's not scary when it's unknown then it's scary but they cannot yeah, change I, the law of yin and yang 
just by words. That is a universal law. It's what the Samaritans called the cosmic will. And these are two removed societies from Taoist thought and ancient, I guess, pagan practice coming to the same conclusion. The cosmic will is a will, you know, that attempts to keep itself balanced. It's chaos and order. I don't even use the term good and evil. So we just what it is. So when you first learned about this, how did you keep yourself from getting scared or depressed? Because it is kind of scary. And once you're like fully immersed, I can imagine you had some really interesting and unsettling encounters. How did you keep positive and decide you want to start to heal people and and not just let yourself get swallowed up by that? Oh, it's, you know, it started slow. It started with noticing something and something that I had to deal with. And everything I've dealt with and I've stripped away, I've noticed that there's more layers to it. And then I have to deal with the next layer. I was born with problems, metaphysical problems. You know, I could either ignore, have ignored them or done something about it. And I chose to do something about it. And the reward of doing something about it far outweighs not doing something about it. Now, things like nightmares, being chased by an entity, seeing shadows in your room, having sleep paralysis. This is something that can be dealt with by embracing your abilities of sorcery. There's, because if you can perceive, if you could perceive these things, you can also deal with And that's probably why when I go into the ocean, the first thing I do is stick my head in the water and look around me and make sure there's no sharks around because I need to see them. (laughs) It's a good idea. Benton, this has been super fascinating. I I did not know what to expect, but this was not it. So I'm (laughs) I'm glad because it's always, I always love being surprised by conversations that we have on the show. Your book is called The Shores of Eternity, A Memoir of Sorcery, Volume 1. We're going to add a link, a direct link to that book on our show notes, along with your Instagram accounts and your Twitter and your Facebook. In case someone wants to connect with you, you can go to our show notes and click the direct link. It'll take you directly to him so that you can connect with him. It's, it's really, it's Benton Ryer across the board from what I'm seeing. It's R-Y-E-R. Thank you so much for coming on and, I, and talking to us about stuff. And thank you for the clearing that you did for us yesterday. Do you have any last words you want to you want to put out there? So I just wanted to say that, you know, there was in the news, you know, Elon Musk, he's coming out with new microchips and things that implant, he implanted in people. I know some things about that on meta, in the, by metaphysical nature. I don't take any implants like that in your body. I wasn't going to say anything about this any of that. We were <laughs> closing out. This, this is an entire conversation that we should be having. <laughs> Well, we'll do it. Nope. Then, then we'll then we will do it next time. I agree with that. Yeah, perfect. I think that's going to have to be because sadly we are running out of time. Benton, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to staying in contact. I um, really enjoyed the interview. Thank you for having me on. And if anyone listening needs a healing, just contact me on Instagram. I do have an Etsy store just in case people really need it, and I don't see their messages because I get slammed. But that'll, you know, kind of pop them up. I charge a little. It's not much. But, you know, I, the vast majority of my healings I do for free. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for, thank you for your service, really, because that's, that's really what you're doing is you're providing a service. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me on. Thank you.